My name is Nicole Grenan. I'm an archaeologist with the Florida Public Archaeology Network, a program of the University of West Florida. And I'm a part of this project as a diver for the deep water operation. So as opposed to the shallow water operations taking place in the lagoon, which are typically 30 feet and above, the deep water operations were taking part in a deeper part of the water surrounding the island of Saipan on the western coast. And most of our dives were anywhere from 80 to 140 feet of water. Some of those depths are outside of recreational limits for scuba divers. So it takes special gear, special technology, special training to do diving in those deeper water areas. So the deep water divers that were a part of this project used two different methods of deep water diving or technical diving. Some of the divers, those from the East Carolina University and with us at the University of West Florida, we utilized open circuit technical diving so that we could dive to those deeper depths in cases where we needed to do that. The divers that were affiliated with Task Force Dagger Special Operations Foundation used a different kind of technical diving equipment called rebreathers or closed circuit diving. But how did we decide to dive the sites that we dove as part of these deep water operations? What we did was we essentially took data from NOAA, and this is LIDAR data, and LIDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging. And this LIDAR data is collected aerially, and it penetrates the surface of the water, and you're able to get essentially an image of the seafloor. And in the case of this project, we were able to get uh, LIDAR penetration down to about 150 feet. And so the targets that we dove on were initially pulled from that LIDAR data. In the cases where we want to do full uh, 3D models of some of the sites that were discovered during our deep water diving, we would often send down an ROV first to either see if something was there, and then if there was something there, create a 3D model through photogrammetry. So as a part of the initial citizen science training for those who were diving in the shallower water areas of the lagoon, we went through basic methods in photogrammetry. So letting people know what kind of equipment they need and then how they can take photographs systematically to be able to collect the data we need for the creation of those models once we plug it into the computer software. So what we did was we took essentially an object that they could use in the classroom training. I think we used a chair and then we taught them how to take photographs of that chair in a way that would produce the most accurate 3D model. The fantastic thing about photogrammetry uh, in addition is that you can look at change over time. If you visit sites repeatedly as a citizen scientist or as a diver, you can do a photogrammetric model one year and then you can go back the next year and do it again and see how that site has changed. If underwater archaeology and underwater exploration of cultural heritage sites is something that interests you, of course, the perfect starting point for that is to learn more about archaeology and to learn more about anthropology, which is the discipline uh, that archaeology falls under here in the United States. So getting that basic education. And if underwater archaeology is something that really interests you, there are many different ways to get involved. It doesn't take being a diver to be involved with underwater archaeology. Of course, if you want to be the one underwater doing the diving, it does take some dive training. But you can also specialize in things like underwater survey. So you don't have to go underwater for that. Just learning the technologies, like using a side scan sonar from a boat or a marine magnetometer, or being able to decipher things like the LIDAR data that we use for identifying targets in this project. You don't have to be a diver to be involved in that aspect of data collection. And of course, there's also working in places like museums or in laboratories that conserve artifacts that are coming up from marine environments. So being a diver is a lot of fun and that's part of the job, but it's not all of the job. People who are interested in underwater archaeology can get involved in many different aspects. And like anything else, if you're uh, unsure of what you want to do, try everything, right? Get as many experiences as you can, because that's how you find out what you're really interested in and where your passion is.